Even though the Mancandy FAQ is not a basics instruction, I thought I'd give a few pointers on how things work underlying the rigging and animation system uh, of Mancandy. <clears throat> Doing this on a simple model. This is just a cube that's been subdivided a few times. And uh, we'll see how we add rigging to the simple thing. Now, <clears throat> the way you rig things in Blender is typically with armatures. Um, but before we even go into that, um, the basic system is using modifiers that deform uh, an object. And these deformers can be armatures, but they can also be lattices and hooks, as we can see here. So here's our basic mesh. And we can add these modifiers in a stack to it. And some of them don't even relate to animation. For instance, I can add a subsurf modifier. And this subdivides the object smoothly. And it's used very commonly on characters. I can add a modifier that does relate to animation, which is the lattice deformer. Now, deformers such as the lattice don't do anything by themselves. You need to have an actual lattice object. So I'll add a lattice at the same position as my object. And <clears throat> I'll do Alt-R because I don't like to have default transformations on things typically. And here we have a new lattice. Now, the lattice has a name, which is called lattice. And we can type that name here in the object field for the modifier. And now the lattice is deforming our mesh. Now, if you select the lattice and move it around, you notice nothing happens. However, if you select, go into edit mode by hitting tab or going to edit mode here, and you select one or more points of the lattice, you'll notice that they do deform the mesh. <coughs> now, that's useful because it allows us to scale the lattice and make it fit the shape of the area we want to deform, like so. And so this gives us a very kind of intuitive way. If I select all the points, they deform everything. If I select fewer points, they only deform like so. And <coughs> you can change the resolution of the lattice here and add, not in edit mode though, you can add more subdivisions into the lattice vertically or horizontally uh, as you please. Let's leave it basic for now. <clears throat> Another thing that's cool about these modifiers is that they often have a vertex group limitation. And so what that means is we can go into edit mode on our mesh and we can create, select a bunch of points and we can create a new vertex group right here by clicking new, calling this uh, lattice, for instance, or lat, and assigning these points to it. We can also do that in weight paint mode. <coughs> and we can, in this mode, nicely paint the weights of this vertex group with different brushes. So I can smooth the effect in the middle. Or I can use this filter here to just automatically smooth what's under the uh, under the mouse. So here we have that. I'll filter here too. So I have this newly created lattice, uh, ver lat vertex group. I have this lattice here. And I'll simply type the name of, before I do that, let's go into edit mode on our lattice. Select some points, move them. Can even rotate them or scale them like so and you can see the influence that has on our mesh now i'll type the name of that vertex group here and you'll see it's only influencing the top part now you notice the deformation is kind of ugly and that's interesting to note and it's because you have the subsurf on the stack here 
and then you have the lattice and the stack on top of it. Well, visually on the bottom of it, but it means it's applying after the subsurface of applied. It's evaluated, you know, physically top down here. And so this modifier here is affecting the subsurfed mesh. And uh, so it's affecting the high res mesh resulting from the subdivision. And to make it affect more smoothly, it would be nicer if it applied to the cage before subsurfing. You can do that by clicking on these little arrow buttons here on the modifiers to move them up or down in the stack. And you'll notice the deformation got subtly smoother between the two modes. It might be also visible in shaded mode. So that's a lot smoother than it was before. So there's a modifier, a lattice modifier in the stack. Now there's a neat thing is that we don't have to restrict ourselves <coughs> to adding modifiers to the uh, mesh itself. I can also add a modifier to the lattice. For instance, I can increase its resolution and add a curve or a hook modifier to it. We'll see examples of both of these later in, later in this tutorial DVD. But hook modifier is a little bit of a special case, which is why I'll mention it here, in that there actually isn't a hook in the menu for the modifier stack. However, if you're in edit mode, you select a bunch of points, and you hit Control H, it allows you to add a hook. And here's our modifier here. Now, out of edit mode, I can select this empty and move those points around. One thing that's interesting about um, hooks is that they have um, various parameters. You can play with the fall off amount and amount of force that they set. So you can have the hook apply smoothly across its area and fall off from the center to the edges of its influence. Of course, the most important modifier, probably, for character animation is the armature modifier. To apply it, we really will have to have an armature. So I'm going to add an armature here. And here's a new armature. Now, it's already in edit mode when you add it. But I'm going to pop out of edit mode for a second. I want it to be in the same center object location as my mesh. So I'll do cursor to selection and snap selection to cursor or in this case I could have just hit alt G since everything's at the coordinate center and I don't want any default transformation on it so I'm going to hit control A apply scale and rotation before I do anything now let's make a sort of a joint with this armature simply grab go into edit mode right click on the middle of the bone and move it down and then click on the little ball at the top and move that up until it encompasses the entire object. You can select, by the way, either the root and tail of the bones or the, the entire bone by clicking in the middle diamond shape. Now if I hit W and then subdivide, I can divide this bone into two segments. And one of them is a connected child of the other. I could also add another bone, like so, select it, shift select this one and hit control P and make it a connected child of that bone. So now we have an armature with two bones and we'd like to apply it as a modifier for our mesh. So we'll select the mesh and add an armature modifier to it and type the name of our new armature in the modifier panel. Now if you select the armature and go into pose mode we can start deforming our mesh with it. Now you'll notice that the deformations don't look too great here. That's because our armature is modifying the mesh via envelopes that have a fall off and those envelopes aren't quite big enough to encompass all the points on the mesh. We can visualize those envelopes by scrolling up here in the edit buttons for the armature and clicking on envelope here in the armature panel. And you can see that we have fairly small envelope sizes.
With any bone selected, in pose mode, you can simply type Alt-S and increase the size of the envelope until it encompasses all the points it needs to deform. You can further tweak this in edit mode by hitting tab on the armature and clicking on the balls at the end or on the middle of the bone and scaling them up. This means that points in t inside the inner part of the bone are deformed 100% that by that bone, whereas points lying outside it in the envelope get a fall-off radius. Now that's important, especially when bones are overlapping, because the fall-off amount def defines how much each bone is deforming the mesh at those points. I'll hit tab again. And we can always turn off this visualization when we don't need to edit it. One point is that when you do edit it, hitting S scales the actual influence, whereas hitting Alt S with the bone selected scales the fall off radius. Now that doesn't look great, and one of the reasons for that is because we're again applying the armature modifier after the subsurf. Let's pump it up before the subsurf. And let's increase our fall off to encompass the, the points in the cage. The reason that happened, by the way, is that the cage is slightly bigger than the, um, than the subsurf mesh. And we can see it by turning off the display of the subsurf modifier in the 3D viewport here. You can restrict its visibility to render, 3D viewport, or to the edit mode. And in this case, I'll turn it off in the viewport so we can see the actual points that the armature is modifying. And you can see that this point lay outside the radius. Alt-S and scaling it up again bring the, brings those in. And now we can click on our mesh and turn on our subsurf modifier again. And we have a lot smoother definition. Let's make our armature back as a stick mode. If I go into a uh, shaded mode here in the viewport, a solid mode in the viewport, you'll see that the armature is hidden by the mesh. In order for the animator to be able to see it, I can turn on X-ray here, and it'll show through the mesh. In an actual rig, you may have some bones that are required to deform the mesh and some that aren't. In order to control this, you can select the bone, scroll down till you see the armature bones panel, and turn off or on deform for that bone's properties and what that does is it prevents the bone from deforming the mesh or enables it. Last but not least there is another way that we can use the armature to modify the mesh and that is by assigning vertex groups to each bone instead of using the envelope falloff. The simplest way to do this is to add vertex groups with the same names as the bones that are supposed to deform them. So bone.001 would have a vertex group called bone.001 and bone would have a vertex group called bone. To make that even simpler and faster, you can simply select on the mesh and since the mesh already has the armature modifier applied to it, it knows which armature to paint for. So if we select weight paint mode in the menu or simply hit control tab, and then right click on a bone, you can start painting a weight for that blown bone automatically. Mode mix, weight one, and we just paint an influence. As a shortcut, you can hit the W key and click apply envelopes to bone weights. Similarly for this bone to vertex groups. And then you can further modify the effect of those weights. For instance, I may not want these vertexes influenced by this bone, and likewise for these. So weight painting allows me a higher degree of refinement over the weights of the bones than using envelopes does. Now I simply hit, and I can also rotate these bones while I'm in weight paint mode to observe the results of my actions. For instance, I can add an influence here and see what it does and conclude that I don't like it and subtract it away. 
And when I'm done, I can hit Control Tab, and now I'm out of weight paint mode, and I have a weight painted armature. And I can turn off the envelope influence in the deformation, since we're now using vertex groups. Now the lattice modifier is still influencing the mesh, and you see here that it's influencing above the armature modifier. So that means if I move this, I can still cause a deformation in the mesh. We'll see that fact exploited later on in Man Candy in several ways, namely for animating his face and creating bendy effects on his joints, such as his, such as his neck arms and legs.